Megan Thee Stallion was supposed to be a generational talent, and at one point, it seemed like Nicki passed the torch to her when they collaborated. But after the hot girl summer of 2020, a stormy cloud has loomed over her career, leaving people to question if she'll ever reach the potential we once saw in her. And better yet, the fact that she might have run her reputation into the ground, too deep to ever fully recover from. Today I want to explore why it seems like Megan's career is on a decline. What went wrong, and can she ever make a full comeback? While Megan was riding high with two number one hits in a year with Savage and WAP dominating TikTok and radio alike, a personal drama surfaced that would alter the trajectory of her career. In August of 2020, Megan accused Tory Lanez of shooting her in the foot after a pool party. This revelation shocked fans as the two had seemed close, with Megan even appearing on Tory's popular quarantine radio show. Official shot o'clock. Live right here on Quarantine Radio. Quarantine, quarantine, quarantine. This has just turned into Quarantine Radio in about five seconds. Quarantine, quarantine, quarantine. <laughs> However, one chaotic night filled with Henny and drama completely flipped the script and a messy fallout would soon follow. The shooting allegations left Tory Lanez disowned by the industry, and he experienced one of the most severe blackballing instances of this generation. And while he was being severely outcast, Megan now had more supporters behind her than ever, and her career, art, and image were at an all-time high. It started with her claims that she and Tory were not more than just friends. That you two were dating? What was the nature We were of your... not dating. We what were really name? close. We were friends. We hung out like every day, and his mom passed too. So when when I felt like we were bonding over, over that. that. And did you have an intimate relationship with him? Like sexual? Megan, <laughs> did you have a sexual relationship with Tory Lanez? Yes, that's my question. I'm not gonna lie, uh, when, when she was like, did she have an intimate relationship with him? And she was like, like sexual? She just went on here and said, yeah, we was fucking. We was fucking behind the scenes. It was going crazy. That's kind of why all this happened, but I, I ain't want y'all to know like that. She could have like played it off cool or something. She gonna lie and say, <laughs> like sexual? <laughs> yeah, nigga, we know you. the gig is up. You cost yourself right there. Um, I didn't have a sexual relationship with Tori. So why do you think he's putting out the story that the two of you had a relationship and that you're making the whole thing up? I think that he is trying to deflect from the fact that he committed a crime. In almost no time, people were pointing out the sus nature of her answer and blasting her with comments such as, The answer was sus. How you gotta think about that? This girl lie way too much. A situation that left Meg wishing that she had just been shot because of the mental turmoil. It would take two years to get into the courtroom. Even then, she felt like the public enemy despite being shot at. In an interview, she shared how it seemed like the publicity her situation was getting only made her more and more hated and ended up benefiting Tori at the same time. She also called the industry a big boys club and felt that because she was a woman coming forward about a rapper, other artists started to hate her. Despite the serious struggles she was undergoing, most of the hip hop audience couldn't help but focus on the lies she had been telling. Most notably, she admitted that she actually did sleep with Tori under oath. While the mainstream media might have defended her, others had a hard time trusting anything she was saying beyond that initial fabrication. Partic See, that was the problem right there. Like, even when all this came, first came out, I was on her side. They got, I deleted all the Tory Lanez music. They got, I had friends telling me, nigga, listen to this new Tory. I'm like, nah, you can't rock with Tory. Tory out here hurting women, bro. Why he shoot the woman? Why he shoot her? And then... We find out the truth that she lied on a nigga. <laughs> I deleted all this good music for no reason. Oh, why did you lie on this nigga? <laughs> That's crazy. Particularly once her former best friend was even coming at her and shared that Meg had snaked her when she tried to pursue Tory Lanez. I've expressed all my concerns to you directly and you know what I have for my issue with. Nah, more of the story what I was trying to get to though is like, bro, you can't sit right here and think we're going to take your side if you, if you lying to us. It's going to be hard to believe you if you lying to us about the simplest thing. Nigga, did y'all have any sexual relations? That's the simplest question. Yes or no. 
I wasn't your enemy. You made me your enemy. We wasn't, we, you know, we stopped fucking with each other, but I wasn't your enemy. You made me your enemy. I have every right to get on here and address this. This issue, on top of major hip hop media outlets like DJ Academics and Adam22 with No Jumper fighting in Tori's corner, it seemed like nobody was on board with Megan anymore. And people weren't afraid to take her accusations online, with some people speculating about how often she has been lying and others calling her out for playing the victim. When the trial came to a close, Tori was ultimately found guilty and put behind bars for an entire decade. And while you think this could clean Megan's slate, people continue to conspire against her. Yeah. The lies that did surface during the whole ordeal opened the Pandora's box that couldn't stop people from questioning every part of the situation, even the verdict. We do believe and that Meg the Stallion was injured that night. Correct. No question. The only thing that I'm questioning, did Tory Lanez take a gun out and attempt to shoot this woman or did something happen where a weapon was fired and Meg was injured? You are not getting any consistency from any of them. Facts. Even Meg. Facts. She has been caught lying and so now that kills your credibility. Meanwhile, others have been happy just to continue to mock her at every turn with their audience loving every minute of it. Tori knew you was Tori was fucking By the way, Tori felt Academics you was wild, Let, man, I'm, I'm not speaking to Tori. I'm no, speaking to everything I've heard about that situation. You was easy put flying to him he never had to do nothing megan has continued to explore all the angles of the situation in interviews tracks and beyond laying out the mental turmoil and physical hardship she's had to overcome in the process but it doesn't seem like many people are tuning in for her side of the story and the lingering lies only soured her reputation more and more over time in the summer of 2022 megan and her team believed that they had a huge hit on their hands with a tell-all album traumatized on its way to reveal all of the secrets and drama from the altercation and beyond but it only peaked at fourth on the Billboard charts, despite being one of the most watched situations in recent hip hop history, and the album wouldn't be certified gold for over a month. What's even more harder to swallow for Megan is the fact that Nicki Minaj's 2009 album, Be Me Up Scotty, was released the year prior and still outsold her new raw project by 20k units. This contrast raised questions about Megan's current standing in the music industry. You're not a superstar if you can't sell out. Okay. What what we talking about right now? Because what stops her from being a superstar if we taking out sales? She ain't sold, got every brand deal in the world, but has also had all the backing from mad different people. She got a lot going on. That's the game today. If everyone knows that Megan can spit and she's practically a household name, why is she still in a position where you could argue that she's slipping from the top of the game? Well, of course, there's the mistrust that she has built as a liar, whether or not she deserves that title, that is still lingering from the Tory Lane shooting case. There's likely some misogyny at play here as well, which isn't a valid reason to discredit her, but it doesn't change the fact that her public lying spree made other sections of her life more suspect. For example, during the Megan Nikki beef, a rumor circulated that some Nikki fans plan to dig up Meg's mom's grave. That's a horrifying idea and nobody would ever condone it. But because it was related to Megan in the first place, Joe Budden decided to speculate and claim this whole thing was planned by Meg. And it was clear that many people were actually taking his side, whether they thought this was realistic or they just felt a similar distaste for Megan. This is another reason that I'm not mad at the lying on your dead mama line. I believe that that is uh, a Meg publicist somewhere pushing these stories about up in the security at my brain and and people are coming here to sabotage it. I think that's a real nasty PR trick. I think that is real nasty. <laughs> I can see through the publicist that, stories that is a nasty like that. Whether these rumors against the barbs were true, Nikki was painted as a bully and that may or may not have sent Meg's track his to the number one spot. If you think that's over speculation, the track died as soon as the drama did, lasting only six weeks in the top 100 after hitting the top. That's a rare level of fall off for a track of this caliber. This is why despite all of her success, people continue to frame Meg as a flop. For every fan, there's a hater, and every instance of her shadiness is fuel for argument. Over time, Megan has acknowledged these mistakes she's made in the past and tried to explain the dark place that she was in when they were made. I feel like it'll be pointless for me to get online and be like, that didn't happen, that's not what it is, cause y'all don't wanna believe me no way. There was a point in my life where I was so low and I was so sad. I was drinking like a I was turning up. I was doing whatever the I wanted to do. I was definitely outside. 
But just as comments like that would have time to do the rounds, you have another scandal or revelation from someone in her personal life. Whether it was her ex-boyfriend Partisan Fontaine claiming she cheated on him even as he was planning to propose, or others ensuring her past behavior still hangs over her. A lot of what people in the industry have said about you, Meg, when you first came in the game, you was an alcoholic. I don't know what your lifestyle is at currently these days, but she was an alcoholic. You was a woman who used to drink, blackout, get drunk, whoever, and then used to be very belligerent and used to be very aggressive. That was the word on you. Then, there have been other strange occurrences yeah. in her camp, including a recent scandal involving a cameraman suing her for unfair dismissal. So, Meg the Stallion um, is being sued. Her former cameraman, Emilio Garcia, let's see how that rolled off my tongue, mm. he is suing her for um, allegedly creating a hostile work environment. Emilio claims that back in June 2022, Meg had sex with an unidentified woman right next to him while riding in an SUV during a tour stop in Ibiza, Spain. He also Dang. claims that the next morning, Megan told him never speak on what you saw and he also said after the inc after the incident megan's behavior changed he claimed that he was body shamed and she she called him a fat bitch and she told him <laughs> spit your food out right and he claimed and while charlemagne is laughing it up people started to point out the double standards and how this information was being handled just imagine the reaction if a male rapper did this to a female employee as her negative image continues to build whether she truly deserves it or not yeah. megan is taking a page out of taylor swift's playbook and spinning the narrative to her own benefit. When Taylor was beefing with Kim and Kanye and the Kardashian clan called her a snake, she adopted the label and got her entire fan base on board. So whenever Nicki took a shot at Megan, calling her a disgusting serpent and a flurry of Wait, so when we was doing these reactions, oh my gosh, God. <laughs> but when we was doing these reactions to the Nicki and the Megan beef, that's why she kept on just referring to herself as a snake in all the visuals. I don't think that's a terrible, like, who am I? What do I know? He did tweets, she took it and ran with it. She started dropping tracks like Cobra, Hiss, and Boa, and utilized snake imagery to paint her alleged venomous personality as a strength, not a weakness. Unfortunately for Megan, a lack of replay has left these tracks in the dust. Notably, when Cobra pulled a Humpty Dumpty, dropping 31 chart spots in just one week. And Boa left some of her fans wondering if the stallion had simply run out of creativity at the time. In her sudden struggle to break into the top charts with her usually huge singles, maybe it's it's not the right time for her to try her hand at independent artistry, but that didn't seem to stop her. This part of my album is very much funded by Megan Thee Stallion because you know we trying to get off. <laughs> Y'all know what's the tea, but I have no label right now, and we're doing everything. The budget is coming from me, motherfucking Hot Girl Productions. Now free from 1501, Megan will finally be able to get the bag like never before. But that hasn't stopped people wondering if this push to stand on her own two feet could be a misstep. And when you consider the recent sales outside of his, you can see their point. In February of 2024, Meg decided that going labelless was perhaps not the wisest choice. So she inked a distribution deal with Warner Music Group that essentially preserved her independence. A huge win for her. Now secure in a great financial deal, Megan is in a unique opportunity. While her public image and record sales are scarily low, it hasn't stopped her from almost selling out her upcoming tour. Over 250,000 people across the US are packing concert venues for her, making it clear that a supportive audience still exists. But we should keep in mind that some reports emerged of her selling the tickets for as low as $24. However, I'm not sure how valid the source is, and that her numbers outside of tour sales aren't exactly promising. So she's gonna have to win back a lot of people to resume her generational run and inherit the crown. For example, as my good friend Halea Yassin reported on Instagram, Spotify allegedly removed 30 million streams from Megan Thee Stallion's Damn. album, which many believe was due to her allegedly botting her numbers to make it look like the album was doing better than it actually was. On top of this, she was also exposed by some TikTokers for the fact that there was a bunch of empty seats covered at her concert, despite the fact that it was reportedly a quote-unquote sold-out tour. Megan Thee Stallion's tour exposed for having empty seats after being reported that it sold out. No Meg, no Meg, no Meg. 
Although some users claim that this is normal for concerts to do, what makes it a bit more weirder is that she was also reportedly giving away free tickets for the seats that people just didn't buy. This makes it look like she's struggling to fill up her concerts. So it's clear to me that something fishy is going on in my own personal opinion, but that's just me. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. As always, it's your boy Luesta, and I'ma catch you guys on the next one. Damn, Meg.